Thank you, thank you so, so much. I'm so happy to be here, but before I start, I do wanna uh, say that I took some notes from some of the other presentations, and a few things stood out with me. And the one thing I wanted to say was that my, my genetic trait is never give up. And that somebody else talked about, it's all in the data, women really are very special. And finally, I want to be brave and fearless forever. So my name is Dr. Peggy Brooks Bertram, and I was born in 1943 during World War II and two years before the war ended. I survived the ghettos and the alley houses of East Baltimore, but I never even dreamed of living to see my seventh decade, but here I am. And I'm about 10 months away from being 70. About 40 years ago, I applied for a job as a nursing home administrator. I interviewed well, but was rejected. I asked why. An older gentleman told me I was rejected because I was too young. He said, you have excitement and enthusiasm for the job, and a job in a place like this would kill your spirit and excitement. I thanked him. <laughs> Today, 40 years later, I'm about the same age as some of those residents in that nursing home. On the doorstep of 70, I don't plan to kill anyone's spirit, including my own. I plan to live with excitement as long as I can, and we all have to grow old if we live, even if we don't want to talk about it. And the reality is reinforced and brought home to you when you get the first notice to join AARP with 2 million and seven other people, two million seven other people in the state of New York. And at 65, Social Security reminds you that you can collect Social Security at 66, or you can wait until 70 if you last that long. At 66, Medicare swamps you with letters about Medicare Part B. I'm waiting for TIAA Kraft to tell me that I have to begin spending my retirement money at age 70 and a half. I don't know what it is about 70 and a half. Isn't anybody know that? <laughs> now you know that you're running out of time. Then the insurance companies, having calculated your expiration date, offers life insurance, but for a shorter period of time. <laughs> then the long-term care people kick in to tell you about the cost of nursing home beds and how to avoid Medicaid. And then comes notices from the cemeteries <laughs> who know you're going to die and want to know how you want to be maintained above ground, below ground, or in an urn. And it's really scary when your gynecologist, your psychologist, your radiologist, and your ophthalmologist all retire before you. <laughs> I don't know about you, but this relentless series of events over the last 15 years is scary. So, I want to tell you that after this endless barrage, I, um, of reminders about the fact that you're coming to an end, I still have new clothes that I haven't worn yet. <laughs> I have new places that I need to go and people I want to see and a few people I want to give a piece of my mind to. <laughs> but I'm trying to get over being scared. So I was thrilled to be selected by TEDx Buffalo Women to discuss their theme of the space between. When I think of the space between, I conceptualize it to be the space between living and dying in the seventh decade and living well and living poorly. I wanted to mock the insidious theme of ageism, the negative stereotyping of the elderly and near elderly, and the hush-hush of discussions about growing old and dying. I especially wanted to launch a dialogue about women telling their age with confidence and growing old with confidence and a sense of humor in the space between. And I agree with Cecil, who, Cecily, who presented earlier, that we have to have a new paradigm. And I suggest a new paradigm about the elderly. And that is that women are really greater than they think they are. And if they're getting old, they're even greater. So I want to share a few do's and don'ts to make living in the seventh decade the best that it can possibly be. First, don't lie about your age, ladies. 
there's always someone who knows how old you are and they are going to tell it. <laughs> Be calm, assertive, and disciplined. It works for Cesar Milan's and his pack of dogs and it'll work for us. Give yourself permission to be who you always wanted to be. Look, I still want to be a stand-up comic. Do I have a chance? <laughs> Identify your inner self and cultivate an inner life. You might not be the person you thought you were, and it's better to find out now than later. Continue to define yourself because you belong to you and stimulate your imagination by writing your own story and tell it just like you want to tell it and then publish it. You'd be surprised. And look, you got to look good forever. Let's get over it. Go shopping. <laughs> Wear makeup until you can no longer draw a straight line or hold a makeup brush. Make up your face each morning. Bright red lipstick and a smoky blue eyeshadow is good for the soul. You want to be seen as well as heard. If your hair gets thin, get a weave or a wig and make sure it's secure and have a scarf for a windy day. <laughs> and don't dress your age. It's bad for your psyche. Besides, you're only 50 inside. Update your wardrobe and wear bright colors together like purple and gold and red and purple boots. Yeah, and if that doesn't raise your serotonin levels, get some fancy stilettos about this high. <laughs> and appreciate your own wisdom. You're smarter than most people you meet, just don't brag about it publicly. And don't call on Jesus too often. He's busy with the elderly. <laughs> and sprinkle your friendships with young people. You're going to need a little wild and crazy in your later years. And technology. Look, that's like being, if you ignore technology, that's like being at the train station with an air t airplane ticket. Don't do that. Don't avoid Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and LinkedIn. Somebody could be looking for you and you might like them. <laughs> and organize your passwords. They're the first things you forget. I have hundreds of them. Do something you've never done before. I learned to swim at 68, tore both rotator cuffs, but I can still swim and save myself for about 10 to 20 minutes in deep water. That's all you need for a life raft. Learn another language like hable usted espanol. Not yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> and that roll of fat around your waist acquired during your last toxic workplace experience, give it the name of your last boss, like Mary. And each morning you get up, call it Murray's Fat, and get rid of it. That's the last thing you want to take to your grave. <laughs> and don't let Arthur and the Wrightest Brothers cramp your style. Just don't stop moving. If you move, you lose. And don't stop, stop laughing. If you got to get wrinkles, it might as well be a laugh line. And continue to love a man or a woman very deeply and tell them that you love them every day, no matter how ugly they get. <laughs> tell your children you love them every day and that the spare bedroom is still available, even if it isn't. And don't stop having sex. <laughs> you could add a few more years to your life. And finally, don't stop having sex. And one final thing I almost forgot, don't get scared if you lose your train of thought between the stove and the refrigerator. Forget about it. You'll remember tomorrow. And with all of that effort, am I still scared? Yeah, I'm still scared, but I'm gonna use the space between in the seventh decade to keep on trucking. Thank you.
Not only soulful and sassy, but inspiring. Dr. Peggy Brooks Bertram, my name is Christina Apt, and I'm 60. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a break for lunch now, right across the street at the historic Hotel Lafayette. Another wonderful element of today's TEDx Buffalo Women is the fact that we get to spend time in a hotel that was created by the first woman architect in the United States, Louise Bethune. Thank you, ladies. A lot of thought and detail have gone into this event for, on items like that, and I'm grateful to this committee for making us aware. While enjoying lunch today, please know there will be guides from here to the library to the hotel to help you on your way. Also know that we will be continuing our lunchtime conversations with a wonderful guest speaker and then followed by the opportunity to connect with fellow audience members and the event speakers who will be sitting with you. After lunch, in approximately one hour, we will reconvene here for an amazing afternoon of riveting talks delivered by remarkable women. Enjoy.